An excerpt from Kafir Boy by Mark Matabane. Though I dislike school, largely because I knew nothing about what actually went on there, and the little I knew had painted a dreadful picture. The fact that a father would not want his son to go to school, especially a father who did not go to school, seemed hard to understand. Why do you want me to go to school, Mama? I asked, hoping that she might somehow clear up some of the confusion that was building in my mind. I want you to have a future child, my mother said. And contrary to what your father says, school is the only means to a future. I don't want you growing up to be like your father. The later statement hit me like a bolt of lightning. It just about shattered every defense mechanism and every pretext I had against going to school. Your father didn't go to school, she continued dabbing her puff eyes to reduce the swelling with a piece of cloth dipped in warm water. That's why he is doing some of the bad things he's doing. Things like drinking, gambling, and neglecting his family. He didn't learn how to read and write. Therefore, he can find a decent job. Lack of education has narrowly focused his life. He sees nothing beyond himself. He still thinks in the old tribal way and still believes that things should be as they were back in the old days when he was growing up as a tribal boy in Louis Trichard. Though he's my husband and your father, he doesn't see any of that. Why didn't he go to school, Mama? He refused to go to school because his father led him to believe that an education was a tool through which white people were going to take things away from him, like they did to the black people in the old days, and that a white man's education was worthless in so far as black people were concerned because it prepared them for jobs that they can't have. But I know it is not totally so, child, because times have changed somewhat. Though our lot is not any better today, an education will get you a decent job. If you can read and write, you'll be better off than those of us who can't. Take my situation. I can't find a job because I don't have papers. And I can get papers because white people mainly want to register people who can read and write. But I want things to be different for you, child. For you and your brothers and sisters. I want you to go to school because I believe that an education is the key you need to open up a new world and a new life for yourself. A world and life different from either your father's or mine. It is the only key that can do that. And only those who seek it earnestly and perseveringly will get anywhere in the white man's world. Education will open doors where none seem to exist. It will make people talk to you, listen to you, and help you. People who otherwise wouldn't bother. It will make you soar like a bird lifting up into the endless blue sky and leave poverty, hunger, and suffering behind. I'll teach you to learn to embrace what's good and shun what's bad and evil. Above all, it will make you somebody in this world. It will make you grow up to be a good and proud person. That's why 
I want you to go to school, child, so that education can do all that and more for you. A long awkward silence followed, during which I reflected upon the significance of my mother's lengthy speech. I look at my mother. She look at me. Finally, I asked, How come you know so much about school, Mama? You didn't go to school, did you? No, child, my mother replied. Just like your father, I never went to school. For the second time that evening, a mere statement of fact had a thunderous impact on me. All the confusion I had about school seemed to leave my mind, like darkness giving way to light. And that had previously been a dark, yawning void in my mind, was suddenly transformed into a beacon of life that began to grow larger and larger until it had swallowed up, bloated out all the blackness. That beacon of light seemed to reveal things and facts which, though they must have always existed in me, I hadn't been aware of up until now. But unlike your father, my mother went on. I've always wanted to go to school, but couldn't because my father, under the sway of tribal traditions, thought it unnecessary to educate females. That's why I so much want you to go, child, for if you do, I know that someday I too would go, old as I could be then. Promise me, therefore, that no matter what, you'll go to school, and I, in return, promise that I will do everything in my power to keep you there. With tears streaming down my cheeks and falling upon my mother's bosom, I promise her that I would go to school forever. That night, at seven and a half years of my life, the battle lines in the family were drawn. My mother on the side, illiterate but determined to have me drink for better or for worse from the well of knowledge. On the other side, my father he too illiterate, yet determined to help me drink from the well of ignorance. Scarcely aware of the magnitude of the decision I was making, or rather, the decision which was being emotionally thrust upon me, I choose to fight on my mother's side, and thus my destiny was forever altered.